Come on, if you're ready to worship the Lord, why doesn't everybody stand at their feet and welcome in the Spirit of God tonight? Come on, let's welcome the presence of the Lord in this place tonight. Hallelujah. Standing on your promise, ready for your spirit to move. International camp meeting. We are so honored and thrilled that you are here with us tonight. We believe God is going to be moving in a very special way during this entire camp meeting. And I just believe right now at the very beginning we should join together as the scripture instructs us to do. Let's join together in one accord. We're in one place, so let's get into one accord. And let's touch heaven right now 
and let's believe God for an apostolic demonstration of his power. I still believe that God can give an outpouring of his spirit. Pentecost is still the answer. This Holy Ghost is still the answer. If you believe that, lift your hands, open your mouth, and give God praise. Let's pray over this service in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask your anointing to be here. We're in one place, and we want to be in one accord with your spirit. Lord, let us be in alignment with you tonight. God, we want a demonstration of your anointing, your power. Let there be healing. Let there be miracles, signs, and wonders. In the name of Jesus, give the preacher a door of utterance to preach the word of God. And let us worship you with everything we have in Jesus' name. Somebody shout in Jesus' name. Come on, shout Jesus. Acts chapter 2. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven like as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. And it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And it shall come to pass in the last day, saith God. God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters will prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, and on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out of my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall I'll receive the gift of the Holy Ghost.
I tell you what, I think I could shout and dance just that we made it through last year and we're all here together tonight. Why don't you turn to a neighbor and say, I'm glad to see you tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated, ushers. If you would, come to the front. We're going to have the opportunity at this time to give. For those of you that are just arriving this evening, I want to let you know that camp meeting began last night and you missed a powerful and anointed service, a bilingual service. It was so powerful. Brother Jesse Galindo blessed us so tremendously last night. And I shared with the congregation here last evening that our offerings during camp meeting are going to go towards missions. Every penny that you give will not stay here in this church, but we will distribute these funds to missionaries around the world. And I am happy to tell you that we are beginning this camp meeting with a $100,000, $130,000 donation and I believe that before we close this meeting, we're going to get to $250,000. I just believe God's going to do that. And so this evening, we're going to be giving to missions. And there are missionaries here. If you're a missionary, would you please stand? Our Brother Jones is here. Let's see missionaries, Brother we're so honored to have all of our missionaries here tonight. And while some of our missionaries could not travel to the United States because of what has been going on in our world, we still will not forget them. And we're going to, we're going to give to the work of God in India, Honduras, Belize, Norway, uh, we're going to give to Brazil, to Taiwan, the Philippines, and this money in Africa, this money is going around the world to missions, and we know God is going to use it for his glory and his honor. So you can give a couple of ways. You can give in the bags here uh, tonight, or you can text to give. 501-436-4017 and in the field of your text type global with your amount and that will go towards our camp meeting 
offerings here in this service. For those of you joining us online, we're honored you're with us too. We want you to participate. We want you to be blessed as well. So make sure you give to missions during this conference as well. Let's pray over our offering. Lord Jesus, we love you. We thank you for the the opportunity and the blessing and the privilege to give tonight. God, I pray you bless this offering. Use it for your purpose, your kingdom, and your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's worship with the choir.
Jesus over your home. Speak the name of Jesus over your family. camp meeting and it feels good hallelujah you may be seated after the service this evening there is a special ministers banquet prepared for all of our ministers and their families we invite you to come join with us at this time I would like to ask all of the ministry if you would to please stand we want to honor the ministry that's here tonight would you stand all over this building on the platform Hallelujah. We want to thank you for being here. It is an honor to host all of the ministry here at Arkansas International Camp Meeting, and we're honored you're here with us. We invite you to join with us after the service in the chapel and in the Great Hall. Uh, also, Connect Cafe, it will be open after the service, and the uh, the the event, the after event for young people has been canceled because of the weather. So we'll, con we'll connect with you later on during the week. Hopefully we'll have some rain lift from this area and we can do that out at our fields across the freeway. But tonight, after the service, ministers join with us in the chapel in the Great Hall. Tomorrow morning, 10.30, Brother Joel McCoy will be preaching the Word of God, and we're thankful for his ministry. I think he's running a few minutes late, but we're glad that he's here with us at camp meeting. And tomorrow evening at 7, Brother Nathaniel Urshan will be preaching. Brother Urshan, would you stand? We're so honored that he is here with us. You don't want to miss one service. It's going to be powerful, and I invite you to come early time of prayer before the service, and we're going to have a, a move of the Holy Ghost in each and every service. The choir is coming to sing, and then we're going to get the preacher on the floor tonight to preach the Word of God to us. Let's worship with the choir. Why don't we stand all across the house tonight and just slip a hand in the air for just a moment. I don't know what you walked into this place with going on in your life. But we speak victory right now over you, over your church, over whatever circumstance you came in here with. God has the power to give you victory. Come on, just for a couple moments before we go any further, why don't you just raise a hand in the air and just say, God, right now I pray for the victory. I pray that I receive the victory. Come on, really invite the presence of God into your situation and into your circumstance. Not just invite him in the house, but invite him into your life. Invite them into your situation. Come on, just reach out a hand in the air and just say, Jesus, I'll still praise you. Even if I don't understand God, I'll still praise you. Come on, lift up a sound in the building. Jesus, Jesus. I will praise you in the way. I will praise you. 
you in the way. Victory is coming. Victory is coming. I will praise you in the way. I will praise you in the way. Victory is coming. Victory is coming. I will praise you in the way. I will praise you in the way. Victory is coming. Victory is coming. I will praise you in the way. I will praise you in the way. Victory is coming. 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 Oh, victory is coming. Victory is coming. Victory is coming.
And we know a God that is able to meet every need. Come on, if you have needs in your life, why don't you just lift your hands? Let's speak that name right now. We know all power is in the name of Jesus. God. I said, I'm glad I serve the mighty God. Oh, come on, why don't we praise his name? Come on, balcony, join in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Just remain standing with us tonight. Again, we want to say welcome Thank you for being here. It is our honor to have you here to host such a great meeting with so many wonderful people that are here. God bless you for being here. And we pray that your time here is blessed. If you need anything, feel free to reach out to one of our ushers, hostesses, anybody in the building. We're happy to help in any way. We want to make your stay as enjoyable as possible. We're just excited you're here with us this evening. It's so good tonight to have Pastor Wesley Jackson here to preach the Word of God. And I just believe God's going to do something great in this house. It's an honor to invite him to come to this pulpit and preach tonight. This is a man that I have watched the last 19 years, I guess it was, and I've watched the work of God operate in his life, and he came here to North Little Rock, and he wasn't a preacher when he got here, in fact, kind of a man without a country, but God brought him here, he and his beautiful wife, Sister Alicia Jackson, and Brother Jackson learned the secret, and that is to crawl up underneath a pew and to pray. came here, I think a salesman, but he left here a preacher of the gospel. And I'm going to tell you, he's selling the greatest thing on earth. <laughs> Hallelujah. Brother Jackson is one of my dearest, closest friends, and we have we've definitely ridden the, the river together. It all started when we were both young, newly married, and I had a harebrained idea to start a bulletin for the church, and I would do that on Saturday nights after procrastinating all week, I guess. And we would sit in my office, and I would be on the computer, and he would be lounging on the couch. And after about 2 in the morning, I'd wake him up, take him home and we'd get up and go to church the next morning. A lot of good memories, a lot of good times. We've traveled the world together and our families have been close friends and I am humbled and honored to have him here tonight and I'm so blessed to see the work of God that's gone forth in his life. It is a joy to bring him here tonight to preach the word of God. He's preached all over the country, the world. You've heard him before, but he's never preached this camp meeting, and I'm glad to introduce him on this first night of Arkansas International Camp Meeting. <laughs> Pastor Jackson, come, preach the word of God to us.
why don't you really give Jesus a great hand clap of praise and thanksgiving? You said he was better than good to you, so why don't you give him a better than good kind of praise right now? Come on, that's good, but why don't we turn it up just a little bit for the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Come on, lift your voice again. I feel victory in this house tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I know you're standing. You can... Begin turning with me to the gospel according to Luke, the fourth chapter. While you're turning, uh, I want to say how honored I am to get to be here and be a very small part of what is going to be a great, great, great camp meeting this week. Uh, I give honor First and foremost, to our great God, Savior, Jesus Christ. And he has been very merciful to every one of us. He has blessed us and kept us and gifted to all of us. And as was already mentioned, one of the greatest gifts of my life outside of the baptism of the Holy Ghost and my beautiful precious wife was God gave me Bishop J.N. Holmes as my pastor and I honor him tonight it, it, it wasn't pretty when I come staggering in here the first time and they took me in and loved me helped me and still loving me still helping me <laughs> I hadn't yet arrived, Uh, but in all of that time, I guess one of the greatest compliments I could give my pastor in all of that time, I've given him many, many reasons to be disappointed and embarrassed of me, but never, and I've been with him in all settings, never has he given me one opportunity to be disappointed or embarrassed of him. He is truly a Christian a man of God, and he is my pastor, and I I love him dearly. Uh, To Pastor Nathan Holmes, Sister Mandy Holmes, Benson, Beatrice, and Millie, I love them so, so very much. To have my wife and children here with me tonight, uh, I'm, I'm a blessed man. I pastor some of the greatest people in the world in Generette, Louisiana. Many of them are here tonight. I honor them. Many more of them are watching online. And to every man of God that's here tonight, I honor you. I salute you. To my fellow laborers, uh, I'm glad I'm getting my part out of the way. <laughs> and uh, I'm on party while y'all sweat. But I'll tell them the truth. The rest of us are just window dressing for who everybody really came to hear, and that's Monday night. Uh, they're they're going to endure as some of them, some of us before Monday night, and endure the rest of you after Monday night. They come to hear the bishop, and nobody more excited about hearing him than I am and he will not splash around in some little tuttle puddle he gets in the deep and and so uh, I'm I'm, I'm excited brother Galindo what a tremendous word from God last night I enjoyed it. it 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 was wonderful and it gave me a new appreciation being on the other side of being interpreted to so I salute all of you who do that week in, week out. I do not come to you tonight with enticing words of man's wisdom. 
Matter of fact, I have such a very, very simple thought. But I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that God put this on my heart. And that tonight, everybody shout tonight. God wants to work many miracles and mighty works in our midst tonight. And so I want to read you a couple of verses of Scripture found in the Gospel of Luke, chapter number 4. Of course, the setting, Jesus has returned full of the Holy Ghost from the temptation in the wilderness. He has stood up on the Sabbath and read about the Spirit of the Lord being upon him, anointing him to preach, to heal, to deliver, to help recover, to set at liberty, to preach jubilee. And then the Bible says that he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them this day, everybody shout this day. This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. You don't have to wait for your miracle until tomorrow is what he was telling them. You can have your miracle today. Verse number 23, he says, I know what you will say unto me. You'll quote the proverb, physician, heal thyself. Whatsoever we have heard done in Capernaum, we've heard about the little shows you put on. We, we want you to do that here too. But he said, verily I say unto you, no prophet is accepted in his own country. But I will tell you this truth. I will tell you this truth. There were many widows in Israel during the days of Elias when the heaven was shut up three years, six months, and great famine was throughout all the land. But though there were many opportunities for people to receive the miracle, only one of them, only one of them, a widow in Sidon. And many lepers were in Israel in the time of Elias, the prophet, and none of them were cleansed, saving Naaman the Syrian. And then the Bible says that they get upset and aggravated. And he, passing through the midst of them, went his way. He said, I'll work the miracle. It's not can I. It's not will I. It's will you let me. Mark would say it on this wise. And he could do no mighty work save laying his hands on a few sick folk. Not because of him, but because of them. And I want to just preach to you what I know that the Spirit is wanting to scream into this congregation tonight. And that is whatever you do, don't miss your miracle. Don't miss your miracle. I'm going to tell you the miracle workers in this house tonight. The one that's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you can even ask or think according to the power that's working in each of us. It's not if he can and it's not if he will. It's who will let him. Why don't you turn to your neighbor and tell him, don't miss your miracle. Come on, tell him, don't miss your miracle. God, I need your help tonight. Move me out of the way. Hide me behind the cross. My attempts are feeble at best. But I know that tonight you want to do many marvelous, mighty works. Uh, 
I pray that you would help us that we would receive uh, what you've come to give. Uh, would you put your hands together one more time? Come on, would you shout with your voice just one more time? God bless you as you're seated in the presence of our great God. I, I without hesitancy, without reservation, boldly proclaim and declare to you tonight that I still absolutely believe with all of my heart that our God is still a miracle worker. I believe that God is still a miracle worker. I believe that he can still heal. I believe that he can still deliver. I believe that he can still set free. I, I believe that he can still make ways where there don't seem to be any way. I believe that he can still save. I believe that he can still take authority over cancer. I believe that he can still drive out depression. I believe he can still give peace into a heart and a mind that's troubled by anxiety. I believe that there is still nothing uh, too hard uh, for the Lord. Uh, it doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter what you're dealing with. Uh, it doesn't matter what statistics say. Uh, it doesn't matter what society declares. Uh, there is nothing uh, too hard uh, for the God uh, that's in this house tonight. Nothing. Somebody shout nothing. There, there is nothing uh, that is too hard uh, for him. A very important principle was established in the very book of beginnings when the world was in need of the miraculous. The Bible says that the earth was void and without form and all that was dwelling upon it was darkness uh, and God introduced the way that miracles come to pass. The Bible said that God's spirit began to move uh, and then God's word uh, began to go forth uh, and out of chaos uh, and out of ugliness uh, and out of nothingness uh, God would day after day uh, say it is uh, good. Uh, you know why that excites me tonight? Because that same spirit that hovered over the deep in Genesis 1 uh, is hovering in this house tonight. Uh, that same God uh, that spoke in that day of creation uh, is the same words uh, that's being spoke here tonight. Uh, and you know what I believe? Uh, that there's going to be people walk out of here tonight saying it's good. Uh, it's good. Uh, all is well. All is well. It's good. It's well. God worked a miracle in my life. God is not a man. He cannot lie. And one of the most beautiful things about God is that he is not random. And he does not wake up in a new world every day. But he is a God of such order that the writer, when he would begin to talk about the gifts from God and the miraculous and the things that you and I would need, the Solomon of the New Testament would write it on this wise uh, so that we could have confidence. Uh, he said, in him uh, there is no variableness, uh, neither shadow of turning. Uh, in other words, uh, if he has ever healed, uh, he can still heal. Uh, if he has ever delivered, uh, he can still deliver. Uh, if he has ever given peace, uh, he can still give peace. Uh, if he has ever put a life back together, uh, he can still put a life back together. Uh, if he's ever pushed out a spirit of suicide uh, on the first night of Camp Meeting 2021, uh, he can deliver somebody uh, from that plaguing suicidal spirit tonight. I've come to tell you, uh, God is able. Uh, if you don't hear anything else I say, uh, God is able. Uh, God is able. Uh, God is able. Uh, he is not slack as men count slackness. Another beautiful thing that's about us rather than God 
is that there is no miracle that you need tonight. There is no situation or temptation that you're dealing with except the things that are common to man. I know you're dealing with some things and the enemy's trying to isolate you and he's trying to embarrass you and he's trying to cow you down and he's trying to tell you that you're the only one and that you better not speak up and you better not speak out and certainly don't seek help and certainly don't dare to believe that it can be different. But the truth of the matter is the devil is a liar. The truth is not in him. And there hath no, Paul said it, there hath no temptation taken you but such as common to man. Your struggle is a common problem. Your addiction is a common place. That depression's not just jumping on you. Uh, it's trying to jump on everybody. Uh, but the rider would shift off of us to God. Uh, and he would say, but God is faithful. Uh, who will not tempt you above that which you are able. Uh, but with the temptation, uh, he'll make a way of escape. Uh, in other words, uh, it doesn't matter what you're going through. Uh, it doesn't matter what you're dealing with. Uh, I'm a miracle worker. Uh, I'm a promise keeper. Uh, I'm a way maker. Uh, I can heal, I can exalt, I can abase, I can deliver. There is nothing. One of the last things that Jesus would speak to his disciples before he would ascend back into the heavenlies is I'm sending to you my spirit. And when I send that to you and it comes over you, you're going to receive power. And these same works that you've seen me do, these works and greater works are you going to do. You know what he was telling them? I'm not going out of business just because I'm going away to prepare a place. I'm very much in business, huh? and now uh, you're going to be my partner. Uh, and like you've watched me lay hands on the sick, uh, and they be healed, uh, you can now lay hands on each other, uh, and they be healed. Uh, like you've watched me speak to the demoniac, and he be delivered. Uh, that same spirit, I'm giving it to you, uh, and you can speak that deliverance. Uh, you can speak that help. Uh, you can speak that blessing. He wanted it established that I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so tonight, too many sit here plagued. You've got your hand clap down to perfection. You know what songs to dance with and what sermons to get out your hanky on. You know when to pick up some Kleenexes and dot the manufactured tears out of your eyes. But week after week, you have an encounter with this God and you do not leave differently uh, than you came. And you can do that for a while until the enemy convinces us uh, that where you're at, what you're dealing with, what you're going through uh, is just the way uh, that it has to be. Uh, you've been hearing people tell you that you could be different. You've been hearing preachers preach to you that you could be set free. Uh, you've been in so-called faith and healing services uh, where the power of God was declared to be working the miraculous. Uh, but you can deal with your situation uh, for so long uh, that you don't really question it for everybody else huh? but you start questioning it for you huh? and that's what Jesus was discussing huh? in Luke chapter 4 he walked in at Capernaum huh? and he stepped into the synagogue on that Sabbath huh? and he began to speak something huh? that was prophesied huh? thousands of years before how that God uh, 
through his spirit would allow there to be a gospel preached uh, and captives set free, uh, prison doors opened, uh, jubilee come, uh, and Jesus gets to read that. And he says, I know this isn't the first time you've heard this. Uh, I know this isn't the first time you read this. Uh, I understand uh, this isn't the first night of camp meeting you've ever been to. Uh, this isn't the first faith message uh, and messages of promise uh, that you've ever endured. Uh, that's what Jesus was talking about. He said, but this day, uh, this day, uh, th I know you've been hearing it, uh, but today uh, is your day. Uh, you know what he was telling him? Uh, don't miss your miracle. Uh, don't miss your miracle. Uh, don't, you are to tell somebody, uh, don't miss your miracle. Uh, don't miss your miracle. Uh, It's not that he was not able that robbed them of the miraculous. Matter of fact, he went on to give them some examples. If you're going to preach us a camp meeting about the miraculous, why don't you go home and heal your church first? We know what you're saying, preacher. If you're going to come and preach to us a way of escape, why do you still have people that's locked up? That, that, that's what they were saying to Jesus. And Jesus just stopped them. And he said, before you say anything to me, let me say something to you. There were many people in need uh, when I shut up the heavens. Uh, there were many people with leprosy uh, at the time of Naaman's healing. Uh, but out of all the needs, uh, out of all the dilemmas, uh, we're still preaching uh, about the two that were met uh, and pacifying all those uh, that haven't been met. Uh, and he was trying to tell them, uh, you don't have to tell somebody else's testimony. Uh, it doesn't matter what God hadn't done for somebody else. Uh, God can do something for you. I don't care who God hasn't healed tonight. I've come to tell somebody with cancer, uh, God can heal you. Uh, I don't care who hadn't been delivered. Uh, I've come to tell somebody with addictions, uh, God can set you free. Uh, God is able. how able God is and realizing the desire I mean think about the desire of Jesus Christ David said it on this wise what is man that you would even be mindful of him but then in Revelation speaking to the church Jesus himself would say I am standing at your door Do you understand it's not a preacher knocking tonight? Do you understand it's not a choir trying to hype you up knocking tonight? Do you understand it's not manipulation and witchcraft at work trying to get something accomplished tonight? Do you realize uh, that the God of all heaven and earth, uh, he's knocking at the door of your situation. Uh, and he said, if you'll just open it up, uh, uh, you don't have to do nothing uh, but open up. And so, I, I, in my simple way, and I'm, I'm hurrying, I, I begin to ask myself, because, Brother Urshan, I've missed miracles. That there have most definitely been times when I walked away from a moment, and it wasn't until hours or days later, I thought, that was a visitation from God. That was what it had to been like in Acts when they had stayed up praying. And the angel opened up the prison door and picked up the gatepost. And the answer was knocking. And 
it was easier for them to testify about angels than to accept the miracle that they had been praying for. And I begin to think, what, what, what causes us to miss something so supernatural and something so spectacular? God, through his word, really began to deal with me and show me some things. And I, I'm going to quickly give them to you tonight, but, but you, you need to be sensitive to what God's trying to do. Don't, don't let anybody tell you any different. Not all moments are created equal. And I don't care what anybody says. There are defining moments that come to every one of us that may never pass before us again. If you don't believe that's Bible, you need to go read about death. For it is appointed unto man just once. There are seasons in our life, there are miracle moments in our life that they don't pass by every Sunday. Uh, they don't pass by every camp meeting. Uh, but there are some times uh, and some moments uh, in a setting just like is here tonight where God decides uh, if they want it, uh, they can have it. Uh, if they'll press for it, they can receive it. Uh, if they'll accept it and not miss it, I'll do it. You can sit down. I'm just talking to you for just a minute. And I begin to read and think and search and pray. And I found a very familiar setting in the book of 2 Kings. And this, th this is why people here tonight, if you're not careful, you'll miss it. Syria's been shut up and Samaria's got bars on the doors and a drought and famine has consumed the land. The king looks over the wall one day and he sees two women fighting. If, if, if you think chaos and what we're going through in 2021 is, is new, you, you, you're not much of a student of the word. There's plagues. There's disease. It, 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 it's not just in the city. There's lepers outside of sit, the city. They didn't just start murdering babies. They were murdered. That, that's what the king looked over the wall. And he said, I seen them. And they were fighting over a baby. And I asked them what was wrong. And they said, well, yesterday we murdered my baby so we could eat. I'm going to tell you, every one of us here tonight, our heart is deceitful above all and desperately wicked. Don't you ever forget man is wicked at his core. That's why you got to have the infilling of the Holy Ghost and you got to have the indwelling of the Holy Ghost. Your tongue talking experience 20 years ago, it's not enough to keep your wicked nature from coming out. You need to talk in tongues every day of your life. She said, now that it's come our turn, now that it's come our turn, she, she don't want to do this. And the king does what the people of the city most often do if they're not careful. He stomps his foot and he says, somebody go get that preacher. He didn't even know that in his anger, he was fixing to get his answer. Don't you ever underestimate the power of getting God's man involved. There's people sitting in this house tonight. I know some of you. The first time you come to church, uh, you were drunk. Uh, you were not interested in deliverance. Uh, and really, uh, you come to cause trouble for the preacher. Uh, and in your stupidity, uh, you still stumbled in to your salvation. Uh, because
because when you get God's man involved uh, and God's man uh, gets God's word involved, uh, things can't stay the same. He says, go get that preacher. The preacher comes, and he begins to fuss at him. And he says, well, let me tell you something. This time tomorrow, I know you're eating the droppings of bats today and boiling babies in hot liquid, but by this time tomorrow, if you don't think God can turn it around that quick, because even when you don't see it, he's working. And even when you hadn't recognized it, he's working. And even when you don't feel it, he's working. Uh, you're mad and kicking rocks, uh, but he's already talking to a preacher, uh, saying by this time tomorrow, uh, by this time, Hey, it's not just that prophet in that day. I feel a prophetic anointing on me right now. By this time tomorrow night, somebody's going to have a testimony. Somebody's going to have shook off chains. Somebody has going to see it turn around. it's been tried. It don't matter how many babies they've killed. It doesn't matter how many burn over fields uh, the enemy's trying to tell them they have. Uh, just one word from God. Uh, and... Y'all sit down. I got to hurry. And this is why people miss their miracle. There was a man standing there. I, I, I sure don't want to be ugly. I, I sure don't want to be confrontational. But that's why servants should listen rather than speak. You, you need to leave the speaking to your man of God. Servants are to receive. Don't, don't tell them how to spend the money. Don't tell them when to take the next step for the project. Don't tell them who to let up on the platform and who to keep seated in the pew. When servants speak, they start getting themselves in trouble. If you've got something to say, don't say it to the man of God. Uh, you need to get out of the, one of these pews uh, and take it to God. Oh. But he spoke up and he said, Pastor, in this economy, if God was to punch windows in heaven, you couldn't buy that new building. If God was to punch windows in heaven, you can't grow this church. If God was to punch windows in heaven, uh, you, you're not going to be able uh, to get the spirits of depression and fear uh, and suicide out of this congregation. Uh, and that prophet will to him. Uh, and he said, sir, uh, you not believing it is not going to keep it from happening. Uh, but you're going to miss your miracle. Uh, everybody else in this city, uh, they're going to get their miracle. Uh, but because you couldn't believe the word uh, of the Lord. Now, you, you, you sit down. You, you know why people miss their miracle? It's because they want to hear from a prophet rather than just standing on the word. You, you, you need to understand this. Healing 
does not come because a self-labeled prophet pours oil on your head and spats your forehead. Healing comes because the Word of God says, by his stripes. See, you're waiting on somebody to say something that God's already established. If you need a healing, you don't need a prophet to tell you you can be healed. You just need to believe the Word of God. If you need blessed, you, you don't need some charismatic cowboy get you to sow into this and that. The Word of God says, if you sow sparingly, you'll reap sparingly. If you sow in abundance, you'll reap in abundance. The Word of God says, I will bless them coming in and bless them going out and bless them in the city. And bless. You know why some of you are missing your miracle? Because you get upset at a preacher every time he preaches certain things. And you don't realize it's it's not the words of a preacher. Uh, it's the word of God. You, you, you need to quit getting offended when somebody comes through your assembly and declares, this ain't a burnover over field. There can be great increase right here. We don't believe in his ministry. No, you don't believe in the word of God. And that's why you're missing your miracle. Because the word of God says, not, not the guy that you don't like that did the preaching. The word of God says, of my increase uh, and of my government, uh, there shall be no end. Oh, missionary, uh, you don't need a prophetic word to go home and have revival. Uh, you've got the word that declares, uh, I'll give you wells you didn't dig, uh, vineyards you didn't plant, uh, houses you didn't build. Uh, you don't have to figure it out. You just got I and so, is this okay tonight? And so, so people miss their miracle. Not because God's not able, but because they don't believe. Or because they don't like the messenger. Let me tell you, I wonder what would happen in Pentecost if we got the attitude of the king of Nineveh. He had the ugliest, meanest, contrarious, didn't want anybody to get it right preacher. But he had a message from God. And instead of not responding because they didn't get like the messenger... They received uh, and embraced the message. God turned Nineveh completely around. The second reason that people miss their miracle is because they don't keep coming back to be touched again and again and again. Until their miracle gets to where they're at. Now, I don't want to upset anybody here tonight or offend anybody or cross theological swords. You can disagree. You're probably wrong about other stuff. But, but in, in, in asking God, I, I was reading in the 10th chapter of the book of Daniel. Now, this is where I don't want to offend anybody, but, but Daniel was not on some Daniel's fast. You need to go read it. Somebody might have sold you on a Daniel's fast. But Daniel was having a pity party. The Bible says in Daniel, the 10th chapter, that Daniel's laid out by the river. And he won't any, eat anything good. 
He won't, he won't touch anything sweet or drink any wine. He would not wash his face or anoint himself. Now, for those of you who think I'm stretching it, you need to go read in Daniel the ninth chapter where he was fasting. And he stands up and boldly declares, I was down praying and I was fasting. But see, you need to understand the situation. Daniel is now somewhere around 80 years old. And God is trying to work. It's the third year of Cyrus, the king of Persia. And God, brother Alviar, has put it on Cyrus's heart to let them Jews go back and start building again. God is wanting to work the miraculous. And only about a third of the people who had permission to go got up and went. Now, there's a lot of us that say we want revival. But the truth of the matter is we'd rather spend the weekend in Branson than on Saturday knocking doors at bus ministry. Be, be, because not all of exile's bad. I mean, they're living pretty good in exile right now. And when you get to talking about going back and working and slaving uh, and you got to give everything you got to give uh, and from sun up to sundown, you got to be on a wall uh, with a hammer in one hand and a sword in the other. Uh, there's a lot of people that say they want it built, uh, but they want somebody else to build it. And Daniel's wrestling with this. But I've come to preach to a missionary. I've come to preach to a pastor. I've come to preach to a whole missionary. I've come to preach to a weary saint and a weary warrior. All of a sudden, something happens. Daniel just simply looks up. And when he looks up, an angel doesn't appear, but Daniel sees an angel that who knows how long it had been standing there trying to give him what he needed. And all of a sudden, when he looks up, see, see, God, God doesn't set free powders. Okay, God doesn't set free powders. God sets free praisers. See, if you want your miracle tonight, you got to quit pouting over what hadn't went right, and you got to embrace that God's still on the throne. was fasting, he wasn't obeying Jesus because he said, when you fast, get up and wash your face and anoint yourself. Because this ain't about people knowing you're pouting and things ain't going right. This is about recognizing that at any moment, suddenly something can happen. I'm looking for it. <laughs> by, this, <laughs> by this time tomorrow, I, I don't have time to cry. I, I'm, I'm too busy looking and listening for my word. <laughs> You, you may think I'm just talking tonight, but I'm telling you, God spoke to me. Uh, he wants to pour out miracles uh, in this house tonight. And, and I'm just going to run through the rest of this real quick. The Bible says, in, and he speaks, and then he touches me. He speaks, that's what's happening right now. And then Daniel let him be touched. 
preaching without you responding might do somebody else good, but it's not going to do you any good. You need to get it out of your mind that your applause or lack thereof is you giving credibility uh, or you putting praise on a preacher. Uh, The preacher, if he's preaching God's word, he's got God's approval. He doesn't have to have. Now, your approval makes it a lot better. But when you start clapping uh, and when you start waving uh, and when you start moving, uh, you know why it seems like the preacher preaches better? Because you start getting touched. uh, You start getting touched. uh, You start getting touched. You start feeling the same thing out there that he's feeling up here. And all of a sudden, Because, see, faith cometh by hearing. And, and, And the Bible says that he touched him. And he said, hey, Daniel. I'm fixed to give you some things. Now, Daniel 10 doesn't have any visions in it. It's talking about what had to happen for Daniel to get to the place where he could receive the vision. The vision doesn't start again until the 11th chapter. Daniel 10 is all about Daniel. And he said, that angel spoke to me. And he said, get up. I'm not doing one more thing until you quit wallowing by that river and you start seeing you for how God still sees you. Daniel, if God said Jerusalem was going to be restored, it doesn't matter who went and who stayed. If God said it was going to happen, it's going to happen. And Daniel said he spoke to me and he wanted me to speak. You you go read it. I'm giving it to you in the James Wesley. But Daniel chapter 10, you go read it when you get home. Some of you are so far behind on your Bible reading this year, you need to go home and read it. But he said, I got up. And the angel was now speaking to me and wanting me to speak. But all I could tell him was I don't have no strength right now to, it's not that I don't believe, but I don't have the strength to receive it. He said so, he touched me again. See, just because you don't have the strength right now, that doesn't mean it can't happen. It just means you gotta get another touch. It means you just got to let the Holy Ghost move over you one more time. This might be the time. This might be the night. Uh, Sunday when you got touched, uh, you still couldn't receive all God had for you. Uh, but maybe, just maybe tonight, when you get that another touch, uh, something. Uh, that is Pentecost's greatest hindrance is we come to be entertained rather than to press and be touched. And Daniel says, I, you, 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 you go read it. He said, I felt better. And, and I felt the words now in my mouth. And he said, I, I, Brother Marla, I was trying to get it out. I was trying. He said, but there just was... There just still wasn't enough strength. And the Bible says, and again, suddenly, (laughs) he just reached out and touched me. And he said, when he touched me that third time, it wasn't I couldn't speak, it's I couldn't stop speaking. And he said, Daniel, Now that I got you where you're touched and can see it, you need to understand that the very first time you prayed, before.
before you ever started pouting. Uh, I heard you. Uh, but there's always a resistance uh, to the miraculous. Uh, and just because you didn't see it happening down here uh, didn't mean that it wasn't being dispatched up there. Uh, you know what I've come to tell somebody? Uh, your miracle's been on the way. Uh, your miracle's been on the way. Uh, your miracle's been on the way. Uh, hell had wanted it to get to you. Uh, the angels of darkness uh, didn't want you to receive it. Uh, but you just got to get another touch. Uh, you got to get another touch. And Daniel, he got it. He got that strength. So, so we miss our miracle. Tell your neighbor, don't miss your miracle. You, 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 you think you're just obeying a preacher. You, you, you need to speak prophetically to him right now. You need to tell him your miracle's on the way. You need to turn to your other neighbor. That didn't go so good with that neighbor. Turn to your other neighbor and tell him your miracle's been on the way. Just because you hadn't baptized them yet doesn't mean that God's not stirring your community. Uh, just because you hadn't started teaching them that Bible study uh, doesn't mean that God isn't putting questions in their heart. It doesn't mean uh, that God's not drawing. Uh, it doesn't mean that God's not working. Uh, it's Daniel. Uh, you just got to keep getting touched uh, while the angel keeps fighting. I wish somebody would throw their hands up right now and get touched. Sit down. Yay! I'm going to tell you, it's like fire shut up in my bones right now. Somebody's going to get healed of cancer tonight. I didn't say that casually and to get you to respond. I said it because I feel it. Somebody's going to get healed of cancer tonight. Somebody's going to get deliverance uh, from prescription drugs uh, that you're addicted to. Uh, somebody's marriage. Uh, so, you, you, you can sit down. This was just a decoy. This might be the longest thus far, but Brother Urshan's preaching tomorrow night. No, I'm... Hey, I want to hear it. I'm serious. Because there's something about that word. It starts working like it's working right now. See, that's the problem. We've got in too big of a hurry to get the miraculous. Because, see, our situations are like a hammer. They're like a rock, and the word's like a hammer. And there's a great big rock that's keeping you from your miracle. Uh, and you only sit through just enough hammering uh, to get a few chips knocked away. Uh, you need to, you got time for Instagram. Uh, you got time for Facebook. Uh, you got time to build all them Sim Cities on your phone. Uh, you need to get back to having time for preaching. That's the hammer. That's the hammer. That's the hammer. It can bust up your depression. It can bust up your addiction. It can drive out every cancerous cell in your body. The word works. You are taking my time. You'll miss it if you don't believe. You'll miss it if you start pouting instead of praising your way to a touch while the miracle's trying to get to you. But really, the icing on the cake and, and one of the greatest plagues of Pentecost 
is this last little nugget the Lord dropped on my heart to help you not miss your miracle. It's we've arrived to the place where we only want to respond in sensible manners. And we only want to engage in ways that make sense and appeals to our intellect. And because of that, we miss miracles. Because when God gets ready to move, he don't stand up after reading 16 commentaries and has 12 points on paper. I mean, he, 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 he does really smart stuff like says, Gideon, send everybody home besides them that knew how to drink right and get you a lamp and a stick. Do you not see what they're armed with, God? Gideon, have you forgot this battle's not yours but mine? I'm not wanting you to figure it out. I'm just wanting you to obey. You mean, you mean we're just going to march? See, y'all thought victory marches was just something the old people reminisce about in your congregation. Because it don't make sense to you. You call it antiquated and you want to hang it on the shelf. And you don't realize that some of the biggest giants to ever be buried. Uh, and some of the greatest walls to ever be toppled. Uh, it wasn't with intellect. Uh, it was with simple obedience uh, of having a victory march uh, around the things that God. I wonder what would happen uh, if you just go back home uh, and start marching in victory around your city. I didn't come to talk about all them. I, I come to talk about a man by the name of Naaman. He's got leprosy. You, you, you can sit down. I really am almost through. And it don't look like there's any hope for him getting his miracle. Up to this point, nobody's been healed of leprosy. By the time Jesus speaks in Luke chapter 4, nobody after him got healed of leprosy. And Naaman is a, is a wealthy man. And he's tried all the ways of the world. When is Pentecost they ever going to understand that by the time they try Pentecost, they've tried everything else? They've tried doctors. Uh, they've tried counselors. Uh, they've tried psychiatrists. Uh, they've tried taking this. Uh, they've tried taking that. Uh, they took marriage counseling uh, from a counselor that's been divorced six times theirself. Uh, by the time they try Pentecost, uh, they're not interested in pretty. Uh, they're interested in power. Uh, they're in. And there's a little handmaiden that just happens to speak up. <laughs> She said, Naaman, Naaman, there's a house down there. And at that house, there's a man of God that's at that house. And if you'll just go down there to that house and you'll just do whatever that man tells you to do, Naaman, the God that that man's talking on behalf of, he can work a miracle in your life. This is how some people's reacting to... You can sit down what I'm preaching right now. <laughs> the king hears about it. See, the man in the other house hears about it. And he says, oh, dear God, has, has this little handmaiden decided to do something that's going to bring our total destruction? Has she really went down there and told somebody? Come on. Yeah. I can't explain it. <laughs> I don't know if I'll even go with you. 
I've watched them online a few times and they're crazy. I mean, I don't know what it is, but they start this da 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 And them people look up. I know you weren't going to do that till Monday night, but do it real quick one time. Go ahead and do it one more time. Did y'all forget how to do it? late after the kids choir's done sat down and it tries to slip down in the pew and it don't want nobody to see them and then the preacher brother bass don't even say well we're glad to have so and so here i'm gonna tell you why some of you's missing your miracle because the preacher at the house is sitting back and he hears his footsteps coming. And he don't even preach himself. He brings in an evangelist. Some of you that can't show up on Sunday because you know pastor ain't preaching. See, it ain't about meeting the preacher. It's about getting your miracle from God. The preacher ain't the miracle worker. He's just the conduit for the direction. And he says, hey, go tell Naaman to go down there and dip in Jordan seven times. And when he comes up, he's going to be new. Now, all of y'all act so full of indignation and self-righteousness when you read about Naaman's response. Yet, you call the pastor, and you're wanting to meet him and take 40 minutes of his time, and you're not going to listen anyhow. And he says, you know what you need to do? Have you been coming by that church praying? And you, you don't say it to him, but you hang up the phone and you, that's what he always says. Well, Naaman, if you want the miracle. See, see, you want some hard thing. You, you want something that's intriguing to the intellect of man. And, and the little girl stops him and she says, wait a minute, Naaman. You're getting mad at him, but he don't have leprosy. But he's got a word for your leprosy. And she said, Naaman, if he had asked you to do something hard, You'd have turned heaven and earth to do a hard thing. But because joining up with somebody and shaking them till they talk in tongues don't make no sense. Yes, so anyhow. <laughs> See, sit down one more time. See, Pentecost 
It wasn't meant to be pretty. It's the answer. It was meant to answer, not entertain. You know what entertainment is? It's something that helps you forget for a moment about the true trouble in your life. That's what entertainment is. But the answer changes the trouble in your life. See, and I appreciate every singer, every musician. I love the way that God's blessed Pentecost. But I'm going to tell you some of the greatest miracles. People was just being made fun of for beating an old bass drum. Had old tambourine in their hand. A flat top guitar with only four strings and three of them were out of tune. But see, somewhere in Pentecost, we've become impressed with our own talent. Forgetting that how can our feeble attempt at talent impress a God that created angelic beings with perfect pitch and perfect talent and they don't even have a choice. They don't even get to choose what song they sing. They just have to sing continually. Holy is the Lamb. How are you going to impress that kind of God? He's not impressed with our talent. He's not impressed with our performance. He's impressed with the ugliness of our praise. moved on the right side of the tracks and I like it we got coffee shops and I love that on Sunday mornings I don't even have to fix it at home no more they have one waiting for me when I get to church and they do so much better than Starbucks and then that's something y'all want a discount because it's at church you didn't say Starbucks was too high. Why are you telling us we're too high? But, but there's a lot of places missing the power. And it's because there is nothing that can replace the simple obedience to an unorthodox word. I'm going to tell this, and I'm going to let you do whatever you want to. I, some of you here has heard me tell it. But 1983, Pastor Nathan Holmes was a, it was a troubling year for my mom and dad. My dad was working nights for Santa Fe Railroad. And I'm going to tell you, if you're wondering why I still believe in miracles, I want you to look at my brother and his two sons and his daughters here tonight. You, you can quit believing them if you want to. But he wasn't even born yet. My sister had just been born. And switching trains late one night, a piece of pulp would knock my dad off and broke his back they got him over to Houston and by the time it was said and done they had taken a bone out of his thigh and fused it into his back I remember seeing the scars and all the places they had cut him it, it, it was long before laser stuff and he had them big scars and, and he spent almost all of 1983 Brother Tuttle in the hospital Thank God for good people of the church that was helping take care of my sister and the Coopers who were helping raise me. And my dad spent so much time over there and finally they come in and they begin to talk to my mother and they said, now there's some things you just have to accept. Firstly, he's never going to hold a public job. He's probably never going to have a good quality of life so you're getting ready to have to deal with some things because he's not going to be able to go into the woods and out on the lake because he's we don't know how he's not paralyzed and just the wrong move and he's going to be paralyzed. 
And they said, and we've read through his records. And because of his strong addic addiction to narcotics before y'all's marriage, with all the morphine and things that we've given him, he's going to be an addict the rest of his life. And they put this big old brace on my daddy and got him home after about, I think, I remember my daddy saying close to eight months over there. And he got home and First Pentecostal Church of Sealsby had been in a extended revival and revival was supposed to have closed, but for whatever reason they decided to extend it one more weekend. And I believe his brother Red Cooper called our house just, just to really make conversation. He said, Brother Randy, we, we extend the revival. Surely you're going to be here Sunday, huh? He, he, he was just trying to cheer up. My dad was, he was hard-headed. I'm glad I act like my mother. <laughs> Brother McCoy, he decided he's going to go to church. And I, I was just a kid, but I remember my mother was an emotional wreck. Not because she didn't want him in church, but just because of what she had been told. And she pleaded with him, Let, let's just wait another couple of weeks, one wrong step. And, but my daddy wasn't hearing it. And so that Sunday morning, she got him up and bathed and dressed. And me and my sister up and bathed and dressed. And was late getting to church and it was a scene getting him into the building and church had already started. And I'd hear my daddy and others that would tell of it later said it, it was one of the dry services you, you, you'd ever been in in your life. They got the preacher to the floor and he read his text and it didn't get any better. And he gave his title. Now, y'all don't know what that feels like, but I can relate. And it didn't get any better. <laughs> and, and he just stopped. And he said, I want Brother Randy and Sister Ruby to come down here. I just feel like we are to pray for them. You're clapping. You don't even know what happened. But it, it, it was it, it was a it, it was a show and a distraction, Brother Kirk, getting my daddy to the front. And he said, Brother Dupuis and Brother Pilot, come off that platform. And and they just put their hands on his head and said, God, you know, in Jesus' name. And he said, I didn't feel not one thing. He said, and here I am. He would tell this later. I heard him tell it dozens of times. He said, I almost got mad because they started praying for your mother. Said, and the Holy Ghost fell. See, sometimes it has something to do with a vessel. <laughs> and she got to crying and talking in tongues, and they got to dancing and shouting. And he said, here I am standing there, and I'm hurting, and I can't move. I can't sit down. I can't get back to my seat. I can't do nothing but sit there and watch her get a blessing. He said, then they just turn around and start back up the steps to just leave me like I'm at. And he said, Brother Pilot got halfway up them steps and he just, my daddy said he just wheeled around. And he said, Brother Randy, can you dance a nickel's worth for Jesus? And my daddy said, I thought, Brother Pilot, can you not see this brace on me? He said, but something come over me and said, well, you don't even know what a nickel's worth is. What does it hurt to try? Yeah. 
my daddy said he was hurting and he didn't know what a nickel's worth was and he sure didn't think he could dance. So we just started kind of patting his foot. And he said over an hour later when he come to, he had been worked like a dish rag. That was Southeast Texas lingo. That's how my daddy would tell it. He said, I'd rub my nose on the carpet. He said, before I went home, I got Brother Connard in the prayer room and they cut that brace off of me. And he said, he said, I drove myself back to my next appointment. He said, and when I stepped off that elevator, he said, that doctor, if he hadn't had an education, he could have made a good sailor. He said, because he started cussing me. And he said, they got people around me and got me jerked up. Got me put in that x-ray machine. Wheeled me down to a room. And he said, I knew when they got the results. Because I heard that doctor slamming stuff and cussing. Saying, somebody tell me how it happened. Somebody tell me how it happened. Somebody tell He said he walked in. That doctor walked into that room. And he slapped up them before x-rays. And he slapped up them after x-rays. And he shut down that floor and got everybody crammed into that room. And he said, sir, I want to know what happened. My daddy said, sir, I don't really know what happened. All I can tell you is that's what you can buy for a nickel's worth of praise. You may not like this, and it ain't pretty, but I'm telling you what the Holy Ghost told me. If you could just get loose tonight, if you could just forget about who you are and where you are, and somehow you could give God a nickel's worth of praise, I feel that your city will open up. I feel that your finances will open up. I feel like your mind will clear up. I feel like your emotions will clear up. I feel like your marriage will get better. I feel like your addiction will fall off. But you can't get pretty. You can't have the power and be pretty. You gotta decide, do I wanna keep my problem? Or do I wanna get the power? I've come to tell somebody up in the mezzanine. I've come to tell somebody up in the balcony. You're at the right place. You're in the right moment. There's angels in this house. But you need to get loose in the Holy Ghost. You need to get loose in the Holy Ghost. I want you to close your eyes and take somebody by the hand right now. And I want you to just start shaking up. I don't even know what a nickel's worth looks like, but I have a feeling uh, some hope missionary pastor uh, is going to pay for their revival right now. Uh, I just got a feeling uh, that somebody... Uh, that's battling depression uh, is gonna pay for their joy uh, and their victory right now. Uh, I've just got a feeling uh, that somebody, the devil's been intimidating uh, and driving you crazy. Uh, I feel like you're paying uh, for a miracle moment right now. Uh, 
You need to quit waiting for a cheerleader. Huh? You need to quit waiting for the band to play fast music. Huh? You need to close your eyes. Huh? And you need to connect. It's here right now. It's here right now. Come on, I want you to take three steps. I know it's crowded, uh, but you need to be like the woman and push your way. Uh, I want you to take three steps and join with somebody else. Uh, somebody's fixed to get a miracle right now. Cancer is leaving somebody's body right now. Come on, help me, men of God. Lay hands on somebody out and speak their miracle right now. Come on, there's still too many spectators huh? and not enough tongue talkers. Huh? You need to get loose in the Holy Ghost right now. Huh? You need to get loose in the Holy Ghost right now. Huh? You need to get loose in the Holy Ghost huh? right now. Missionary, I, I dare you to give God a nickel's worth of praise right now. Brother Clark Copeland, uh, God still heals diabetes. Uh, God can heal you uh, in this service tonight. Uh, right now. Uh, right now. Uh, right now. Come on, I know there's some prayer workers in this house. Help me, First Pentecostal Church. Uh, help me, Calvary. Uh, You might be going down for that seventh time. You might be ready to get up with the miracle in your life. Come on, please help me find somebody that's praying and pray with them right now. This ain't a show. This ain't a spectator sport. Somebody's on the precipice of their miracle. This ain't a time to get a cute picture. This ain't the time to get a little something for social media. This is a miracle moment. Huh? There are ministering spirits in this house right now. Huh? There are angels in this building. Huh? There are miracles. Huh? You don't have to be up front. Huh? There's miracles in the center. Huh? There's miracles in the back. Huh? There's miracles in the mezzanine. Huh? There's miracles in the balcony. Huh? There's miracles in this house.
cutesy two-step. You need to get loose in the Holy Ghost. Right now. Right now. Right now. I know the need that you should have. You might be taking advantage of this opportunity right now. Yes, Lord. 